I used a Groupon to go to trapeze school on my 51st birthday. <laughs> I asked my boyfriend if he wanted to do it with me, but he, d he did not, but he would love to watch. <laughs> The ad promised students they could hang upside down, do a backflip, and fly through the air and be caught by a professional aerialist. <laughs> I showed up looking very much like a flyer. I wore my bright salmon shirt and leggings with red stripes. I had read all the instruction. I was ready to fly. I remember the circus came to town every Thanksgiving. As a five-year-old, I sat mesmerized watching the beautiful aerialists flying gracefully through the air, doing flips and somersaults from one trapeze to another. They lived in a world that taught them how to fly, and I dreamed of stowing away on a train, <laughs> joining the circus, and becoming one of those beautifully made up and costumed flying aerialists. <clears throat> At five, I knew I had no chance. <laughs> right before I started riding the bus to kindergarten, mom and dad had a conversation with me. Mom told me I was adopted. Mom said, that means we got to pick you, but we got stuck with your brother. <laughs> She went on, but don't tell anyone, because they might not think you're as good as them. I got on the bus with a secret, and I was determined no one would find out. Even still, I was tagged a fat loser. My cousins and the kids at school chanted, fatty, fatty, two by four at me. By 12, I decided I would leave all of them to see what the world was really about. Trapeze school started with them fastening a security belt around my waist. Then I whizzed through ground school, and with a pat on the back, I ascended the ladder to a platform 18 feet in the air. Everything was happening very quickly, which is how things work best for me. <laughs> Run, jump off the cliff, and figure it out as I'm falling to the ground. <laughs> More often than not, everything works out for the good. That's how I joined the Navy at 17 and finally left home. After milling up and down the hallway for more than an hour, I finally walked in and announced I wanted to join. I was off to boot camp four months later. The hardest thing about boot camp was I never knew what awful thing was going to happen next. One of my very favorite awful things was when the whole company got to do an hour of mountain climbers at the end of a grueling day as punishment for when we supposedly failed a test on how to properly fold and stow our underwear in our lockers. I still fold my underwear into a neat pocket, stack them on top of each other, and place them in the drawer. <laughs> they never let up on us in boot camp. They yelled and criticized us when we were the most exhausted. Now I know it was all a show to see how much we could take. Will we fight back, or worse, cry under pressure? I already lived this drill with my family and the kids at school. I could take it. Boot camp was the time to watch, figure out what they wanted, and conform. It was not the time to be an individual or show any weaknesses. Strength lay in stoicism. In second grade was, the f was when I first learned I could use fear and rejection as fuel for for anger and show people I was as good as them. The spark that ignited that ingenuity was struck when the two most popular girls in school in second grade didn't invite me to join their club. I desperately wanted to be a part of the club, but I wanted to be asked like everyone else. I eventually caved and asked them, the two most popular girls, if I could be in their new club. They said, no. Aww. It's full. <laughs> Laughed and walked away. I'm not sure how my seven-year-old thought it, but in grown-up language, my reaction was, fine, fuck you. <laughs> I'll start my own club, and I'll get everyone that's in your club 
to want to be in my club. And even you will want to be in my club. And when you ask, I will say, no, we're full. <laughs> I sold my new club to the kids with the promise of making puppets. <laughs> Somehow I got the resources to make pu puppets and then I wrote a puppet show. I did get all the kids to join my club. And when the two most popular girls in second grade asked to be in my club, I said, yes, you can be in my club. <laughs> then I pestered the shit out of my very pregnant second grade teacher to let us put on the puppet show. She finally relented and let us do it during show and tell. I was flying high. We did the show, and my teacher didn't like it. <laughs> and some of the kids laughed at me and thought it was stupid. As I remember it, I felt like a NASCAR driver who had crashed into a wall. All of the kids witnessed the crash, black smoke, fire, and explosions. With all that I had accomplished, Victory rested with approval from others, and I walked away feeling like I had in the end failed. The puppet show flopped, and the kids still saw me as a loser. <clears throat> Back in my body on the trapeze platform, 18 feet in the air. It seemed small, and the two instructors took up space, so I was cramped. They hooked two safety lines to the belt around my waist. <clears throat> I heard the instructor call, Listo! That was a cue for the instructors that there's a flyer preparing to leave the platform. I looked at the trees out in front of me. Somehow, I felt like I was higher up than a mere 18 feet on what now felt like a tiny platform. I set my jaw and I pushed everything I was feeling deep down. I, know, I knew to just follow instructions and it will be fine. I thought back to being sent to firefighting school by myself at 19. I didn't know anyone, and I always felt a little more secure when I was well put together, even in my dungarees. I did a tight French braid with my hair, meticulously put on my makeup, and headed to class. I was one of two women in class. I noticed the other woman wasn't wearing any makeup. They decked me out in the firefighting uniform and the oxygen breathing apparatus and OBA. Absolutely no one could see what I looked like. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't care. They did care if I could handle my part. They ignited the JP5 fuel, charged the hose with 184 pounds of pressure, and sent us in. The previously completely empty six-story building was now filled with flames and black smoke. I could feel the heat through the 15 pounds of gear I was wearing. I did what they told me to do. I followed number one nozzle man into the burning building. I held my part of that hose so he could direct the nozzle and put out the fire. We went into that burning building five more times that day. When I got back to my room exhausted, I saw myself in the mirror. My face was covered in soot. I heard my trapeze instructor shout, ready. That was my cue to bend my knees, pick up the trapeze bar. As I reached out for the bar, my center of gravity shifted forward. I felt lightheaded, and then I looked down. The crocheted net was 12 feet below, but it loomed up and down, in and out of focus. It seemed way farther away. I felt nauseated. I felt like I was falling headfirst into the net. I bellowed out, I'm going to fall. Please, bring, please pull me up. Sorry. <laughs> How could this be happening? I've done hard, scary stuff. I've been high up and kept it together. In 2014, I ziplined across 3,800 linear feet, more than 100 feet above the air. 
I was the first one of the group off all six platforms. I love flying above the treetops and seeing the serene scenery from way up high. But now, I was a spectacle on that platform. Prior to my cries, no one was paying attention, but my terror drew a crowd. I felt again like the NASCAR driver crashing into the wall, my wails, explosions of flame and black smoke. My boyfriend was on the ground at the far end of the net videoing me. <laughs> he zoomed in closer when I really started losing my shit. <laughs> I didn't know until later, but every time I cried out, he laughed. I can't. <laughs> I came up with a lot of explanations for him, but for me, it felt the same as it did when I was laughed at in the second grade by the two most popular girls. Don't be too hard on him. He's dead now. <laughs> And to be honest, I needed people like him in my life to doubt me. I needed the pain I got from their doubt and rejection to grow enough fuel to rise up and show them I can do it. The, the, the second try to fly starts again. Listo, ready. Everything happens again, but faster. Like I said, I like things happening fast. Stop thinking, just do, and I can accomplish things way outside of my comfort zone. I raised the trapeze bar again, and it came from my gut. Please, pull me up, I gotta fall! <laughs> the male flyer is jiggling the belt around my waist. He's very intensely telling me he's got me. He won't let me fall, but I don't believe him. When I look at him, I see one of the four foot 11, 90 pound boys in the sixth grade, and I feel like I'm the five foot five, 155 pound girl I was when I was 11. None of those boys could hold me. <clears throat> they start the commands again, listo. I'm sweating, I'm breathing, but I don't feel like I'm getting any air. My hair is sticking to my forehead and the back of my neck, ready. I do the best I can, but I cannot hold my form. Finally, the male instructor behind me pulls me backwards, resets my arms, and hits the back of my knees so they bend. It's like he's positioning the body parts of a Barbie doll. <laughs> my mind swirled back to 2015 when I sang, I'm just a girl who can't say no, from Oklahoma on stage. That song was more about personality than the quality of singing. <laughs> the closer it got to the show, the more I practiced. I did scales and one-on-one -on -one coaching, the more, and the more scared I got. When it all came to a head and I wanted to quit and not do it, it was too late. I couldn't quit. I was like, what was I thinking? thinking? Why did I think this was a good idea? Why do I put myself in these situations? I have to say I did pull it off though. <laughs> the instructor calling HEP brought me back to reality, but I didn't move. The male instructor behind me positions his knee in the middle of my lower back and gives me a nudge off the platform. <laughs> I swing out on the trapeze, the wind is in my face. I swung back and forth probably a dozen times. Hep is called again. This time it means let go. I let go and tumble into the net. I hit the net off center and rolled backwards. I felt dense as I crawled over to the side, did the required flip to dismount off the net and landed with my arms spread out at shoulder height. I flew on the trapeze a total of six times that day. Crashing and burning at trapeze school, 
going beyond my ability to control how I look to the outside world was the beginning of a new kind of flying for me. I let my seven-year-old know, I let my seven-year-old self know that she is a badass. I cherish the courage, tenacity, and spirit she found to face rejection. Four years ago, I started doing stand-up comedy to tackle the demon of laughter. Now I feel like I'm going to die if people don't laugh. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I bought another class at trapeze school, too. Pamela Wardrip, ladies and gentlemen. Pamela Wardrip.